Welcome to Naresh Shaiti. This is Kishore, and today we are going to discuss about C plus plus constructors and destructors. Okay, we are going to discuss about constructors and destructors. Now, what is called constructor and what is called destructor? Before going to discuss constructors and destructors topic, now I am going to give one small example. First of all, why we need the constructors? Okay, that's why first of all I am going to show you one example. Later, I am going to clear the constructor and destructor topic. Now, watch this example. Suppose there is a class. Okay, hash include I was stream dot h. Later, some class test. Later, int a equal to ten, comma b equal to 20. Now, watch it here a b actually they are called data members and uh, here a value passed with 10 and a b value initialized with 20. Now, the problem is C++ compiler never allows this kind of initializations because of data members especially private data members. Okay, the data members of a class should be should be initialized through the member functions of same class okay actually in c++ there is a rule what is that means the data member should be initialized through the member functions of same class which is called data hiding concept okay but actually you are sending or initializing the values directly that's why this concept is not allowed in c++ next now how to initialize this then suppose here you are going to declare like this inta comma b okay later you are creating one object of this one void main suppose here test t actually test is the what class name t is the object name and here you are sending the values like this 10 20 once again it is giving error what is the error test colon colon a not accessible text colon colon b not accessible because of a and b are the private members and private members are initialized not initialized directly they should be initialized through the member functions and there is another alternative what it is you have to declare a comma b as public okay you have to declare public and now when they are public public members can be accessible from anywhere public members can be accessed from anywhere in our program that's why this concept is allowed, but it is against data hiding concept. Actually, C++ main concept is what data hiding means private data should be accessed with the member functions and means it is not available outside the class. When it is public, they are not secured. That's why we are not having any data security means data hiding concept. That's why it is against data hiding. Next, suppose you are going to use nothing int a comma b. This time, suppose you are going to use like this C out A, C out B. Actually, they are giving what garbage values because of there is no initialization. Okay, whenever there is no initialization, the data members are having garbage values. That is why, without initialization, the values will become garbage. Now, here the point is I want to initialize the data members without using a member function means without calling a member function. For example, here I am going to write a function like this. Suppose in public area void get here a equal to 10, b equal to 20. Now, c out a and b. Okay, Roughly, I am giving this example. Now, what happens? Get is the member function and actually the rule is what? with through the member function we can access the private data that is why here a and b are initialized with 10 and 20. Suppose here it is the main function we know that in every function we are having three parts function declaration, function calling, function definition actually it will become function declaration and definition. Now calling required when calling is there first you have to declare object of that class ok test t later t dot get that means here 
get member function is invoked or called. When this one is called, program goes to here and A value becomes 10, B value becomes 20 and they are going to be print. Suppose this line is missed, this line is missed, what happens? Now this member function is not called. When it is not called means uh, A and B are not initialized, that means A and B are having garbage values. Now without calling a member function in this example, without calling this member function A B values are not initialized, but I want to make it automatic means without calling member function I want to initialize A and B values. Then how it is possible means only through the constructor, only through the constructor because of constructor is a special member function watch it constructor also function okay constructor also function but it is a special member function which is used to initialize the object which is used to initialize the object itself and which is called automatic initialization of object okay that's why constructor is a special member function which is used to initialize an object itself and this process is called automatic initialization of object. Now, what are the rules and what are the benefits of constructors? Okay. Next, here the first point when constructor is used, data members are automatically initialized and when they are initialized, when the object of that class is created. Okay. Now, here the point is T is what object? When the object is created, automatically constructor is invoked and the data members are initialized. For this, what are the rules we have to follow? Okay. The first rule for constructor is the name should be equivalent to class name. The name should be equivalent to class name. For example, here watch it, our class name is what? Test and data members A and B. Now, in previous example, I have used void get. Actually, class name test, member function name get. That means there is no relation. But here for constructor, the first rule is what? The constructor should be similar to the class name because of constructor meaning is what? It is a special member function. It is a special member function whose name is similar to the class name and which is used to initialize the object members. That is why here test. Okay brackets close. Now watch it, here class name is test and member function name also test and here watch it, here there is no void or integer or float because of there is another rule for constructor. What is that means? Constructor never returns any value or constructor never have any return data type including void, okay? including void. It is the another important rule for constructor. First rule is what? Constructor name should be similar to the class name and second rule constructor never having any return value and return data type including void, including void. That is why do not start with void or integer or anything, just start with test only. Okay, fine. It is the second rule. Okay, fine. Next, A value 10 and B value 20. Now, brackets close. In my example, it is called what? Constructor. Okay, it is the constructor. Next, here what happens? Suppose we are going for main function, void main. Okay, in main function, CLR here I have declared. Next, test t. Here test is what? Class name, and t is the object name. Test is the class name t is the object. Now, the object is created now. When this object is created, this constructor function automatically initialized means it is automatically called. Now, what happens? A which a t dot a becomes 10 and b becomes 20. That is why here just assume it is the t object and it is having a b. Now, a value becomes 10, b value becomes 20 and watch it. Here we have called any function. No, just only the object is created. That is why the most important feature of constructor is constructor invoked 
automatically when an object of that class is created when an object of that class is created that is why this constructor automatically executed a value becomes 10 b value becomes 20. Now, here watch it it is the public area it is the private area and uh, suppose you are removing public now your program gives error this program gives error because of there is another rule for constructor what is that means constructors and destructors both should be declared in the public area remember this when they are private they are not invoked and they will give errors that is why constructors and destructors should be declared in public area. Next another rule it is the constructor name no? and here there is no argument okay? that means constructor without arguments allowed and constructor with arguments also allowed that is why here constructor may or may not have arguments or parameters that is why it is possible to overload the constructors that means constructors are participating in overloading it is another important point next constructors okay constructors never participate in inheritance they cannot participate in inheritance it is a important another rule the so, constructors never participate in inheritance and we are not able to find out the address it is another important we are not able to find out the address of a constructor and they will make implicit calls they will make implicit calls to new and delete operators we know the dynamic memory allocation okay when new and delete operators are used constructors are invoked automatically that's why they will make implicit calls to new and delete operators next another important thing constructors also having default arguments okay next another important thing generally when it is a member function we can call any number of times we can call any number of times but constructor is linked with what object name that is why here constructor is executed only once it is the most important thing constructor is executed only once when the object is created further callings are not allowed okay? that is why we can use a constructor only once in entire class when it is when the object is created and further callings are not allowed suppose it is normal function we can call any number of times but it is not possible for constructors okay because of they are linked with the objects and another important thing when it is normal function we are going to call with object name dot operator with the dot operator okay for example previous example suppose get function t dot get we are using but here whenever it is a constructor do not use the object name followed by dot membership operator they never invoked with the object name they never invoked with the object name because of they are automatically executed mm -hmm. now in this example these are the rules and regulations and constructors why we need means they are used to initialize the object itself and second one it provides the resources for the object members okay and there is no need of calling the constructor member functions okay and next they are participating in overloading that means we can declare any number of constructors within a class by changing the number of arguments by changing the number of arguments data types and order okay next the side is called constructor overloading okay and another rule is what constructor should be declared within the public area and they do not have any written data type including void or any written value okay constructor never returns and they should be declared in public area only when it is private they are not invoked because of private members are not invoked from main function no? it is the problem okay and when they are going to execute it when the class object is created generally creation is also called construction that is why when they are going to when they, they are going to execute when the object of that class is constructed that is why they are called constructors and next 
In C++ we are having three types of constructors, one is default constructor, second one parameterized constructor, third one copy constructor. We are having three types of constructors, default, parameterized, copy constructor and in default constructor, default constructor means what? A constructor without any arguments or in zero parameterized constructor, a constructor without any arguments. For example, say this test there is empty brackets means here there is no argument. Now, it is called default constructor that is why a constructor without any argument is called default or a zero parameterized see this zero means nothing no parameters that is why it is also called default and we are having two types of constructors default constructors one is what that is system defined okay or system created and second one user defined okay one is compiler written one is compiler written means compiler creates the constructor and second one is a user defined okay for example what is compiler defined suppose here i am going to explain with one example say this now you have declared a class like this class test av public void get something now watch this in this class there is no constructor this there is no constructor. Now, you have to compile this now. Okay. When this program is compiled, your compiler watches any constructor is defined or not, no constructor. Immediately, it creates a constructor inside the class without any code, remember this. Okay. Now, after compiling this program, your compiler creates a new class without any code with the constructor, that means with a constructor. And now it is called compiler defined or compiler written constructor. That is why a class without any constructor after compilation is having a default constructor which is called compiler written or compiler defined. Second one is what user defined. Now I will show you what is a user defined constructor. Okay. Now watch this here class test two data members. Now, I am going to declare a constructor. Now, it is called user defined default constructor and here I am going to enter a value 10, b value 20. Next, I want to print this data. Now, void show here c out a equal to a and, and c out b equal to b and and class closed. Another point it is the default constructor it is a normal member function. Now, what happens test t, t is the what object of this class. Now, object created now when this object created automatically this function invoked a comma b will becomes 10 and 20. Now, a value 10 b value 20 later t dot show now gets h program close. When t dot show is called what happens? It is going to print the a and b value. That is why here it is going to show a and b values. Now, it is created by the user now. That is why it is called user defined default constructor. It is a user defined default constructor. That is why we are having two types of constructors. One is what? System written which is created by the compiler at compile time whenever the class is not having a constructor second one we have to define that is called default constructor. It is the example for okay, user defined default constructor. Now, what is a parameterized constructor? In next session, we are going to discuss what is a parameterized constructor. Okay. Thank you for watching.